combating nutrition disinformation and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live, and we're here with yet another episode of Jimmy Rants. Are you tired of me ranting yet? Yeah, a lot of you guys aren't. That's why I keep coming on here every single day, bringing you brand new topics of interest that I like to rant about. So, JimmyRants.com is the website if you want to check out all of the Jimmy Rants. We do this live on Instagram uh, twice a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon. And uh, yeah, you can get your rant on with Jimmy Rants twice a day. Go follow me at Instagram if you're watching this on YouTube, for example. I'm at Living Low Carb Man on Instagram, and you can follow me there. Join in on the live there, and you can also watch the replay there for 24 hours, or go to JimmyRants.com, and you can watch all of the rants that I've done uh, on the replay there, Forever and Ever Amen, on YouTube. And we're so close, you guys, to releasing the Jimmy Rants podcast on Apple Podcasts and wherever you listen to podcasts. So that's coming very soon. But today's rant, let me pin it here so you guys on Instagram can see it, is clearing up the cholesterol confusion. And this is a funny one to me because I wrote a whole book about cholesterol in 2013 called Cholesterol Clarity, What the HDL is Wrong with My Numbers. Because I felt like a lot of the information that was being put out there was great but nobody was understanding it. Nobody could get it in easy to understand language. And everybody still thinks high cholesterol is some kind of grave disease because you go see your doctor and he looks at your panel. Mm, yeah. Mm. You have this condition called hypercholesterolemia. Now, to a lay public, to a patient, hearing a doctor say that you have hypercholesterolemia, it sounds like you have this grave disease that if you don't do something about it immediately, you're going to die tomorrow. All hypercholesterolemia means is high cholesterol. It's not really any disease per se. It's simply the presence of having high cholesterol. And then here's where they also get you. Well, if your uh, total cholesterol is over 300, you have this thing called familial hypercholesterolemia. All right, so what the heck does all that mean? So familial hypercholesterolemia is a real thing, by the way. Uh, it is a genetic tendency towards having high cholesterol. So it's dubious about what it actually means in your health, but they throw out this term, familial hypercholesterolemia. In fact, a lot of the tests when you come back with a 300 total cholesterol, for example, it will automatically spit that out on the page. Patient could be exhibiting signs of familial hypocholesterolemia. Well, I had it tested when I did my book, uh, Cholesterol Clarity, because I had always been told you have familial hypocholesterolemia. So I did the test. It was about $1,500. Uh, I want to say the company was called Ambry Genetics to see if I had the genetic... Uh, disease that they were describing to me, a familial hypercholesterolemia. And it came back as patient has a 5% chance that it's familial hypercholesterolemia. 5%. So in other words, no, I did not have familial hypercholesterolemia. And so a lot of people, they go keto, they start eating low carb, high fat and adding more healthy fats to their diet and their cholesterol panel goes out of whack. And they're like, oh no, uh, keto made me less healthy because my LDL went up, because my total cholesterol went up. Because that's the old paradigm that doctors are still living under. You go to any mainstream medical doctor that hasn't been enlightened with the newer information, and they will tell you, all that matters on your cholesterol panel is your LDL cholesterol, which is listed as LDLC, and your total cholesterol. And primarily they'll go to the total cholesterol because they have this thing called a standard of care that requires them that if you have a total cholesterol over 200, they have to write you a statin medication. It's in their their uh, standard of care that they must do that. They have cholesterol guidelines 
lot of patients don't know about this stuff, that they have guidelines, doctors do, and especially with the new health care law, the Affordable Care Act, when it was signed into law, there were all kinds of new restrictions and things that doctors had to abide by. So here's what happens. You go see your doctor. He runs your cholesterol. You come back with a 220 total cholesterol and or your LDL cholesterol is over 100. And he's like, yeah, that's you got to get that cholesterol under control. So we're going to write you a, a prescription for Lipitor or Crestor or Zocor or whatever the other ones are that are out there to, quote, lower your cholesterol to make you healthier. He has to do that. He has to do that. Because if he does not, and you have all these bad numbers, and then something happened to you, he could be sued. Okay? So, as a patient, you go in and you see this doctor, and he's telling you your 220 requires you to take the statin medication. This is where you politely say, thank you. You grab the statin medication prescription from them. So now they've fulfilled their duty of giving you a prescription for statin medication. Then it's up to you as the empowered patient to determine, is this going to make me more healthy or is this going to make me less healthy? And that's something that you're going to have to decide for yourself. I would not pretend to come on here and say, don't ever take a statin drug. I would never, never again. I used to be on both Lipitor and Crestor before I went low-carb keto. And it gave me bad joint pain, muscle ache. I was just talking to my cousin the other day. He watches me on these rants here. And he was describing, uh, you know, that he had really, really high uh, levels on his cholesterol panel that we'll talk about here in a second. And I'm like, do you take a statin medication? He said, yeah. I said, do you, you know, feel muscle aches and joint pain? Yeah, I do. I was wondering what's going on. And he's a little bit older than me. And I said, you know what? It's that drug. So you have to make the decision. Do you want to put up with all those side effects that come from this drug that all it does is artificially lower your cholesterol? And I always say, to what end? The end result people think of taking these medications is, well, I'll prevent a heart attack. I'll prevent heart disease. I'll make myself healthier. But would it surprise you? Lean in, guys. Would it surprise you? to know that when you take a statin medication, you increase your risk of type 2 diabetes. You increase your risk of cancer. And here's the big shocker. You increase your risk of heart freaking disease. Does that make any sense at all to anybody? That the drug that people are taking under the auspices that it's going to make them more healthy in their heart actually increases your risk of heart disease. Why does it do that, by the way? It does that because it depletes your body of this really incredible heart uh, healthy element known as CoQ10, coenzyme Q10, gets depleted when you take statin medications. And so if you're depleting your body of a key heart health element, is that heart healthy? No, nobody in their right mind would ever say that is heart healthy to do that. And yet people obediently take those statin medications day after day after day because the man in the white coat said, this is going to make you better because we need to get your cholesterol down. So if it's not LDLC and it's not total cholesterol that matter on that panel, what does matter on your standard lipid, lipid panel? It's two other numbers that are very rarely talked about. Your doctor might talk about the good cholesterol, uh, the HDL cholesterol. Might talk about that being good, and let's see what that is. And they're looking for a number somewhere around 30 or 40. And they don't blink an eye if it's 30 or 40. But I'm going to tell you, if you're keto, that number should be higher than lower. Okay? So if you're below 50, it's a clear indication on your HDL. It's a clear indication that you're not eating enough fat on your ketogenic diet. Because if you're eating ample amounts of fat, that number should be definitely over 50. Optimally, you want it over 70. And all you ladies watching this, you're going to smile from ear to ear on this one. You ladies, it's so easy for you to get higher HDL cholesterol. There's just something about your biochemistry that makes it easier. For those of us that are dudes, 
uh, it's a whole lot harder. So that's why I always encourage people, especially guys, to eat more fat because it's extremely difficult to get your um, HDL cholesterol uh, much above 70 or 80. Women can get 100, 110 pretty easily. So hopefully that's good information that helps you out. But that's the one number on the panel that's usually ignored. The other number that's ignored, and it's always ignored, partly because doctors don't know what to do about it, is triglycerides. Now listen carefully. If you have triglyceride levels that are over 100, and maybe you don't know, so I encourage you, ask your doctor to get your latest test results, or when you go to test again, pay attention to what your triglycerides are. This is a really nasty blood fat that's far worse than anything the LDL will ever be to you. Triglycerides are a major determination of how you're doing in controlling the amount of carbs in your diet, okay? So when someone goes low carb, the first thing you'll see that will drop like a rock is your triglycerides. So my my wife, Christine, actually has an example of this. So before she went low carb keto, she loved her Skittles. She loved her M&M. She loved diet, uh, Dr. Pepper, regular Dr. Pepper. And she would eat those. And she went and saw her doctor. And her doctor actually had to like look at her and go, you know, your triglycerides are kind of going a little bit higher than we'd like to see it. They say it should be 150 or less. It actually should be 100 or less. But she had higher triglycerides, almost 300 and she came to me and she said, and this was before she did low carb, and I had already done my success story. And she said, my triglycerides are 300 almost. And I was like, you know what to do. All we did was cut out Skittles, M&Ms, and Dr. Pepper. And guess what happened to her triglycerides in six weeks, you guys? Six weeks. Went from about 290 something down to 136. That's the power of carbohydrate restriction on the relevant blood markers on your cholesterol panel, okay? So I tell that story, and today her uh, triglycerides are well well below 70. Um, she's rocking it because she's full on keto now. But that's an example of how mainstream medicine totally ignores all the important data, triglycerides and HDL, puts a lot of light on things that really aren't that relevant total cholesterol, which includes your HDL, by the way, uh, which if you have higher HDL, guess what? You're going to have higher total cholesterol. So why are we dinging people for having higher of a good thing? Um, and then here's the big bugaboo about your LDL. You ready? LDL-C, which is on your uh, traditional cholesterol panel, LDL-C is merely calculated most patients have no clue that they're not directly measuring LDL. What they're doing is they're taking all of the rest of the numbers on your panel, they're putting it through this thing called a Friedwald equation. And the Friedwald equation then spits out what your LDL is estimated. So it estimates what your LDL cholesterol is, but guess what? When your triglycerides are under 100 and your, L, uh, and your HDL is over 50, it miscalculates what your LDL is. So those of you that go keto and you suddenly see your cholesterol panel go through the roof, that's what's happened. This Friedwald equation is guesstimating what your LDL is and it can't do it properly because you don't have bad triglycerides and you don't have bad HDL. And so suddenly those numbers look like they're out of whack, LDLC and total cholesterol. When in fact, your relevant numbers, triglyceride and HDL, and the ratio between those two things has gotten incredibly good. So clearing up this cholesterol confusion is, let's pay attention to the numbers that matter and let's ignore the ones that don't matter. And of course, now we have all of these different ways to test different particles. So there's this test called an NMR lipoprofile test that lets you see the LDL particles and the small dense LDL particles, which are truly atherogenic, but you don't really need to do all that as long as your triglycerides are under 100 and your HDL is over 50. One other thing that you can do 
is ask your doctor to run an inflammation marker. So HSCRP, high sensitivity C-reactive protein is a very easy one for a doctor to run. And they can run that and you're looking for the number to be below two, optimally under one. So if you have a triglyceride under 100, an HDL cholesterol that is over 50, an HSCRP that is under two, what are you worried about again, about heart disease? Why, why are we worried about our quote high cholesterol? Yeah, it makes no sense at all, does it? So if that's not convincing to your doctor, then you can say, okay, I wanna have a heart calcium score done. So what it is, it's a CT scan of your chest and it will actually look for signs of um, clogged arteries, so to speak, but basically where the plaque has built up in your arteries. And if there's any calcified plaque there, they will see it on a CT scan of your chest. I've had this done twice in the past 10 years and both came back a big fat zero. Now, mind you, I eat probably 75-ish percent of my diet is fat and I still have a big fat zero. I haven't taken a satin medication since 2004 is when I came off of, uh, I think it was Crestor was the last one I was on, had Lipitor before that. Um, and I haven't taken anything like that since. And yet my heart calcium score is zero. You can also get what's called a carotid intima. Uh, so a C-I-M-T is what that's called. And they'll, they'll do a little ultrasound on both of your carotid arteries and see if there's any thickness. The, the intima thickness is what they're looking for, um, which would be a sign of heart health problems as well. So to recap, if you're just joining us, we're talking about clearing up the cholesterol confusion. I still, to this day, get daily emails. Oh no, the doctor said keto messed up my cholesterol panel and I have to get off that keto thing because my LDL and my total cholesterol went wackadoodle. And so reframe the discussion and say, okay, thank you. Uh, I'll take that statin medication um, prescription from you. Then you don't have to fill it and you do keto because what's going to happen is you'll find you'll get all of these great benefits from keto that we've talked about here today, lowering the triglycerides, raising the HDL cholesterol, um, lowering your small dense LDL particles, all of that stuff gets better, lowering your inflammation levels, all of the things and then actual signs of disease taking place. And if you tell your doctor, well, I don't wanna take my statin, I'm not gonna take a statin. Guess what? You get dinged on your file as a non-compliant patient. And so why be confrontational with your doctor when the doctor is feeling pressure that he has to write the prescription. You're feeling pressure that you have to take this drug because you're trying to trust this person you've given your health uh, decisions over to. By the way, you're the one making the health decisions. So at the end of the day, you choose what's right for you, but play the game a little bit. Help them out, take the, take the prescription and do whatever you want with it after that. You don't have to actually take and fill the, the prescription and then take the pills. You don't have to do that. You make the decision about what makes sense to you um, and then get healthy. I, I think that's how we break this system that has paralyzed people into fearing what their cholesterol is. And I haven't even gotten into all of the good things that happen when you do have higher levels of cholesterol. Maybe we'll save that for another Jimmy Rants, but let's see what you guys have to say. Welcome in, welcome in. Thanks for being here. I'm watching from East Tennessee. Thank you, Jen. Thanks for being here. Hello, Lauren. Hello, Keto Road. Just trying to clear my dad's brainwash about cholesterol. Yeah, it, it truly is a brainwashing because we've all been led to believe that high cholesterol is a disease. But when you reframe it and you realize high cholesterol is just a number, it's not really telling you anything about what's actually happening in your body from a cardiovascular standpoint. Um, and here's the thing, uh, Jimmy Rance is going to get really controversial right now. I think it's a better idea to have higher levels of cholesterol than it is to have lower levels of cholesterol. Yeah, you heard me right. High cholesterol is a beneficial thing in your health and low cholesterol is an extremely diseased state. Let me give you an example. So if you have a total cholesterol that drops below 150, that generally means your LDL is way down. 
and you have probably very low HDL cholesterol and other things. When you're not getting ample amounts of cholesterol in your body, your body starts to rebel a little bit. And at first place it hits your brain because people don't realize a lot of fat, a lot of cholesterol actually helps to fuel and run the, the brain. So if you lower your cholesterol, you're going to start having mood issues, bouts of uh, um, anger, depression, all of that comes on strong. And yet people pop these Lipitor and Crestor like they're Tic Tacs because, well, I can't have high cholesterol, but man, I feel like crap. You know, and they don't realize it's the statin drug doing it. For me, when I took both Lipitor and Crestor, I got my uh, I got my total cholesterol down to like 125, 130 at one point. And Christine will tell you, I was not a nice man. Um, I was angry all the time. It was the drug. It was the drug. It was depleting my body of all of this goodness that my body naturally wanted to make for me. And here's the other thing. You know, they always say, don't eat a lot of cholesterol in your diet, lest you get to heart disease. Do you know if you don't eat cholesterol, your body is a very efficient maker of cholesterol without having to eat it? So it's kind of silly, kind of all the notions that have been put out there that, well, we must tell people to eat less cholesterol in their diet. We need a low cholesterol, low saturated fat diet. Your body's going to make those things if you don't feed it to them. And at some point, there will be a breaking point because you do have to feed your body those things or you will become diseased and eventually die. That's what happened to Tim Russert. You might remember him from Meet the Press. He was the longtime host of the NBC News show, uh, Meet the Press. And he died at the age of like 54 of the very first heart attack he ever had. His total cholesterol was 105. 105. And yet, we talked about this earlier, his HSCRP was extremely high, something like nine, eight or nine. Um, so he had a lot of inflammation going on, obviously, he had a heart attack. And because he didn't have enough cholesterol to kind of deal with the inflammation, and this is the other thing nobody ever talks about with cholesterol. Cholesterol is the biggest inflammation depressor in your body. If you have inflammation anywhere going on in your body, you need cholesterol to go and deal with that inflammation. That's one of its roles is to help heal your body from inflammation. So if you're not feeding your body enough cholesterol and enough of the raw materials to deal with inflammation, then you're going to be a sitting duck just like Tim Russert was. So when he finally had a heart attack, it killed him because there was no cholesterol to come rescue him from what would ultimately be his demise. Good morning. Hope you're having a lovely day. Thank you, Olga. I am having a great day. Kat says, I was always wondering if they could track if some prescriptions were or were not filled. Yeah, I, I don't know, Kat, to be honest. But, um, but again, at the end of the day, empowered patient. You as the patient have the choice of what you choose to do with the information that your doctor gives you in that relationship. You are the boss. The doctor is merely a consultant in your health. And if we look at it, that, that relationship that way, um, it changes everything about what we've done in mainstream medicine. And of course, some doctors will balk at that. No, you must do everything I say, or you're a non-compliant patient. Um, you can say, thank you. Appreciate all of the advice you've given me. Um, I'm going to do what works for me and what's right for me, but thank you for your consultation and I'll continue to consult you um, unless they become belligerent and refuse to run various tests that you want run, which is what happened to me when my doctor stopped running uh, insulin. I said, bye, you're fired. I, I, I have to track certain markers and if you're not intelligent enough and wise enough to know an insulin resistant man needs to test his insulin and see where he is then i've got to find someone else that will care uh ashton says cholesterol is essential for our brain health i will never take a satin med again yep just made that point keto emergency smiles from ear to ear finally something that we have uh easier yes exactly all right, I think I missed it. What number should the LDL be? Olga, Olga, you don't need to worry about your LDL. That's the point. Um, LDL is a useless number 
on your cholesterol panel because it's only estimated. So regarding triglycerides, it's under 100. HDL, it's over 50. Optimally, you want triglycerides under 70, HDL over 70. And especially for you as a woman, um, it's going to be very easy to get over 70. Uh, but getting that triglyceride down is the key. So when you do those things, your LDLC on your traditional cholesterol panel is going to be whacked. So you don't really care what that is because it's only a calculated number, as we talked about earlier. <laughs> Disregard because you've already answered. Sorry, I answered again. I'm scrolling. All right. Hello from Arkansas. Thanks for being here, Joette. I'm a fan. So love keto. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Your body creates 30,000 cholesterol a day, Ashton says. I, I don't know what units that is. Is that IU of cholesterol? That's pretty cool. Keto Neogenesis, I just came in. Going to have to show the YouTube replay to my mom. She's beautiful inside and out, but I can see and feel her struggle to keep it all together. She's on a statin medication. Yeah. I watched my brother Kevin. He was on very high doses of about 25 or 30 meds towards the end of his life, and he already had heart disease and everything, so... Maybe for somebody like him, it was beneficial. He took nitroglycerin and all kind of other stuff. Uh, but for most people, you don't need it. Now, uh, I was telling you about my cousin Robert earlier. Um, he was uh, sharing the other day that he has a triglyceride number of 800. But then his like other cholesterol numbers were all good. And so I explained to him that 800 is an indication that he probably could benefit from a ketogenic diet. So he's giving it a go. If you guys see Robert on any of my Instagram lives, definitely show him some love. It will take a while for that message to be mainstream, but spreading the knowledge all the time. Kat, that's what I've been doing. I wrote a whole book about this. I actually started the writing process uh, over six years ago on that book, Release Cholesterol Clarity in 2013. And it just fascinates me how people still haven't gotten the point that caring about your cholesterol really is a big deal. It's really not. And definitely Dave Feldman is doing some incredible work. Go look up cholesterolcode.com, I believe is his website, where he's doing some experiments that's showing the uh, and mocking basic, basically the, the mockery that is testing your cholesterol. So go check that out. Keto Weedo says, my husband's cholesterol doubled since starting keto. What are some good reading materials? So cholesterol clarity uh, is definitely one that could help explain that. There's another one called The Great Cholesterol Con by Malcolm Kendrick is a great book. Um, the Great Cholesterol Myth by Dr. Johnny Bowden and uh, Stephen Sinatra, Dr. Stephen Sinatra, who's a cardiologist. Another great book. And like I said, Dave Feldman's work over at Cholesterol Code. So hopefully that will help uh, get you going. But if his cholesterol doubled, some of that's HDL. That's a good thing. If his cholesterol doubled, some of it is that calculated LDLC that we talked about. So don't trust your standard lipid panel. Ask for a more advanced one. Ask for the CT heart scan. Ask for... <clears throat> inflammation markers, ask for all these things that matter more. And again, they're outlined in all those books I just shared with you. Will all this info be in the new book? Um, Kimberly, I've shared all of this info in Cholesterol Clarity, as well as we had a chapter in my last book uh, called The Keto Cure. It came out in April of this year with Dr. Adam Nally. A whole chapter talking about the cholesterol stuff. So, uh, go check out either Cholesterol Clarity and or The Keto Cure. Uh, my new book, which releases today, Real Food Keto, um, it's uh, more about nutritional therapy. Obviously, indirectly can impact your cholesterol levels, but we don't get explicit into those numbers. Also, that guy, Dr. Barry's book, Lies My Doctor Told Me, covers cholesterol. Yeah, there's a lot of books that cover it uh, in chapters and things like that, but if you want a whole book about it, Cholesterol Clarity, uh, The Great Cholesterol uh, Myth, and uh, cholesterol, The Great Cholesterol Con, both of those are, or all three of those are really good resources. All right, guys, that is it for this Jimmy Rants episode. As always, go to JimmyRants.com if you want to watch the replay of any of my rants. We're up to 30-something now, and so we're, we're rolling on the rants. 
And we really hope you're enjoying this. If you're wanting to watch live, I'm on twice a day on Instagram Live. Go follow me at Livin Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N, there. And we do those in the morning and in the afternoon. And we, uh, and they're up 24 hours for you to watch there. You can also watch the replay on YouTube. And then we're going to have a brand new podcast coming out with the best of the best of all of these Jimmy rants. And that will be coming very soon. We'll let you know when that's up. But thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you again soon. Bye.